What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to refactor and modernize our dictionary app from this into this with Kinter and Python. All right guys, in this video, we're going to modernize an app that we did a couple of videos ago. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off memberships, online courses, videos, and books, one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to modernize an app we did a few videos ago, this dictionary app. And we're going to make it look all cool and modern over here using the custom Kinter library we talked about in the last video. So, in the last video, I showed you this awesome library that modernizes things, but we didn't really dig into it. And like I said, this thing is awesome, but there's still a few little quirks with it. So, it's not just as simple as changing a few things in your app and then bang zoom, it looks nicer. So that's what we're sort of going to look at in this video. I'm going to walk you through it. We're going to take this app that we did a few videos ago and change it into this. Now, I'll put a link in the description below for this video and the code for this. But basically, it's just a little basic dictionary app we created. You enter a word, click look up. It looks up the definition of the word and all the stuff and it prints it into this text box. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. So let's head back over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Kinter videos in this series. Over 200 videos, so check those out if you haven't so far. So I've got our code that we created a few videos ago for this dictionary app, and I just renamed it dictionary underscore custom because we're going to customize it, right? So there's not much to this, but I'll put a link to the code in the description. You can see it's, you know, half a page long, right? So first off, just to sort of remind ourselves what we looked at in the last video, go to github.com slash Tom Shemansky slash custom Kinter. And you can see this is the custom Kinter stuff. We checked that out in the last video So watch that if you didn't see it. So we're going to use this documentation. But first, we're just going to copy these three lines into our app. So just right up here at the top, bang, we'll pop these in. Now the theme is blue, I'm going to go with dark blue just because I like it a little bit better. And the system, I want this to be dark instead of just regular. So okay, that looks good. So now we also need to change our root declaration right there as well. So if we head back over here, we just need to sort of change it to this, right? So super easy, just instead of root equals TK, we want root equals custom Kinter dot CTK. Okay, so Right off the bat, let's just go ahead and save this and see if that did anything at all. It, it did something, but let's see what exactly it did. So this is dictionary underscore cust dot pi. Let's head back to our terminal. I'm in my C GUI directory. And let's just run Python dictionary underscore cust dot pi. And when we do, we see, okay, it's, uh, you know, it's made this dark when we click off of it. Uh, this doesn't look great. And this doesn't look great. But all right, we're getting somewhere and we click on it, it changes. So okay. So now let's just come through here to all of our widgets and things and start updating them. So right off the bat, we have a label frame, right? That's where that box is at the top. Now, the custom Kinter library does not have a label frame. So we're going to have to get a little creative. And as of right now, that's sort of what you have to do. You have to get a little creative with this, but it's not too hard. And uh, I'll just show you how to do it in this video. So we come through here to the documentation. And these are our widgets we have to choose from. So I'm going to look through here and oh, CTK frame. That looks like it might work. So I'm just going to copy this, the name of it here, head back over to our code. And instead of this being a label frame, I'm just going to boom, paste that in. So the CTK frame doesn't take text. So we're going to have to take that out. But it does have a corner underscore radius. So you can set this to anything you want. So I'm going to say I'm going to set it to 50 because that's extreme just so we can see, you know, how extreme this is. So let's run this again. And we see, okay, that is very extreme, right? It's very rounded. And that does not look good. It kind of cuts off there. So that's at 50. We definitely don't want 50. But I just wanted to kind of show you a contrast. So instead, let's change this to 10. So I'll go ahead and save this run it again, just to show you. Okay, it's less rounded. And that looks a little better. So okay, that's good. So now let's change this button. So I'm going to come over here to our documentation, come down here to button, click on it. And here we see the custom Kinter slash CTK button. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that. And again, we have border width, we have radius, we have width and height we can change, which is nice. So I'm going to come to our button and I'm just going to pop that in there. And you know, for now, I think I'll just leave everything the same. So let's go ahead and save this, run it, see how that looks. And okay, it's a little bit bigger than I might want. Instead, I'm going to just resize the entire app. And that'll be fine. So let's just do that real quick. 
I'm going to come up to the top in our root geometry. And let's just change this to like, I don't know what, say 620 by, I'm going to make this a little smaller, 470, let's say. So go ahead and save this, run it, just make sure that looks okay. I suspect it will. Okay, so that's a little better. And okay. So now we have this entry box, this big, white, ugly entry box. That's no good. We need to change that. So back to the documentation and just come down here to entry. Piece of cake. Copy this guy. Now you'll notice about the entry, it has a width and a height. And the regular Kinter entry widget does not have that. We have to hack around it by changing the font of the text inside to change the thing. So this is much nicer. I like this a lot. So let's head over here. And let's pop this in. Instead of entry, we want CTK entry. And while we're at it here, it does not take a font. Like I just said, instead it has a width and a height. So let's give this a width of like 400 and a height of like 40. Let's see how this looks. Run this guy. All right, that's looking nicer. Notice the border. It's kind of chunky, right? We can change the border width of that as well. So let's do that. I think default is two. So come back to our entry here and just give this a border underscore width of one. Save this, run it, see how that looks. All right, much nicer. Uh, text in here is white, we might want to change that. Also, we can give this placeholder text. So let's do both of those things real quick. So I'm going to go placeholder underscore text. And I'm going to set that equal to enter a word. And we can also give this a text color. So let's go text underscore color. And I'm going to set this equal to silver. Nothing too radical. All right, so let's run this. Now you see we've got placeholder text that says enter a word. That's nice. When we click on it, boom, it disappears. And the text is silver and that looks good. Okay, so very quickly, if we head back over to the documentation. Here are all the other things you can do with this. You can do the foreground color, background color, text color, placeholder text color, placeholder text we already did, and the text font, right? A little bit different than font. It's now text font, right? So you can still change the font. You just use text font instead of font. So, okay. and all of these widgets are the same. I haven't mentioned it, but there's all the different arguments in the documentation. So for instance, the frame we were just looking at earlier, here's all the different attributes you can play with, right? Same thing with button, right? Here's all the different things you can change with a button. And they're very self-evident, right? Corner radius, that's the circular, that's the roundness of the button, the border width, the color, all the things, the hover stuff, very self-explanatory. I'll let you play around with that. So, okay, now, We've got, if we run this guy one more time, we can see we've got a problem. This is a Kinter text widget. It's a text box, right? Well, unfortunately, if we come back over here, there is no text box, right? So, uh-oh, what do we do? Ah, we can hack around this. We can use the text box. We can just change the color so you don't know that it's a text box. So first, I'm going to add a new frame because I want the same roundness and stuff, right? So let's head back over here. And here's our text box. And above it, I'm just going to say uh, text underscore frame. And we could just copy this from earlier. I just want to use the same thing. And let's text underscore frame dot pack this guy. And maybe we want to give this a pad Y of like 10, push it down screen a little bit. That's probably good. Now here, our text box, instead of putting it in a root, I'm going to put it inside of this text frame, right? So, okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and save this, run it, see what that looks like. It's probably not great, but we're getting there. Okay, so you can sort of see the outline around here, right? It's right up to the edge here, so we can change that with some pad X. So we can go to our text box right here and give it also a pad X of 10. Save this, run it again. You can say, okay, so now that's a little better. That looks good. We might want to have to change the size of this to make it a little wider. Let's just go ahead and do that real quick. Let's set a 65, let's say what, 67, something like that. Play around with these, whatever. Run this guy again. Okay, so I like the size of that. Lines up with this a little bit better. Okay, so now we've got this big, ugly white box. What can we do about that? Well, very simple. We don't need to use the custom Kinter thing at all. We can just change the color and stuff of our text box using regular old Kinter. So we come over to our text box, and the first thing I'm going to do is take out the border. So border equals zero, right? Now then I'm going to give it a background color of whatever we want. Now, I happen to know that this frame background color is 292929, 
think. And I, I got that from Photoshop. I just did a screenshot and did a color selector thing to find that color. So that's cool. So let's go ahead and save this and run it, see how that looks. Boom, it looks like it disappears. Now all we really see is the frame, but we can click here and type stuff in. Now the text is black, that's no good. We can change that. We just give this a foreground color of whatever we want. So let's change the text to silver because up here, we put the silver in our entry box um, right there, right? So let's keep these two colors the same. Go ahead and save this, head back over here, run it one more time. Now I can type stuff in and that looks good. Now we can test this out and see if it works. So just type in house. Notice the same color here as here. That's nice. Click look up, boom, done. Very cool. So pretty simple to refactor our code and make it more modern looking using this library. A couple of little things we had to hack around with the text box, obviously, but uh, it's a simple fix really until I don't know in the future, maybe he will put a text box in this custom library. Maybe it won't. We don't really need one. We can use the old text box just fine and just hide it like this. So yeah, pretty easy. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out Konami.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Kodomi.com and I'll see you in the next video.